that's for me. Probably one what I'm doing. Every day in the studio. Every day in the studio. Every day, no fully shit. In the streets with the Yeezys on. In the streets with the hoodie up. Hey. No! Games. <laughs> Podcast slash show. show. You know. You know, today's been a day, and I just want to say I appreciate Cost oh my gosh. and Arthur so much, so much. Cost, don't fucking touch me. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? It's all love around here. This is the Play No Games podcast. And show. Show. Cost, can you say something just really quick? Check. One, two. Okay. Can you hear me? Hello. Yeah. All right. It's so, a show. Yeah. All right. We're keeping that even still. So, yeah. Um. As you see, we're the, the best mobile podcast in Oregon. Seriously. We we be popping up. We might pop up at your grandma's house while she's cooking catfish and the grease is popping. We might just be there. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I can smell grandma cooking right now. Yeah. So yeah. um, if you're tuning in, this is an opportunity for you all to just, how about you just, why don't you hit that like, hit that share. Hit that, that subscribe. Yeah. Whether it's on YouTube, whether it's on Spotify, Apple Podcast. Tell your mamas, your grandmamas, your great grandmamas, your aunties, your cousins, your sisters, your babies, nephews, uncles, daughters. And your bald headed cousins. Man, let them know. Tell them all. Yes, because we are literally one of the best mobile podcast that really want to put you on a higher vibration when it comes to how to navigate and live life because i just know when i'm down and out and i'm not at my best i know i can turn this podcast and look left and right and i know things we talk about are going to uplift the people while they're trying to elevate to another level absolutely yeah absolutely. so do that but also if you made it this far please if you want to help us, we want to play some wacky sounds and do other things. Donate to my, I mean, our cash app. <laughs> <laughs> We're keeping that. Dollar Sign Hero Bob. We are definitely, I will definitely make sure I put all this money back into the podcast. But or before we get into anything, I have a scenario for us, gentlemen. It's yes, been a wild shoot. day. Yeah. And we, we this, need some goofs and gaps. Oh, man. We've got enough from you, oh, buddy. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, you know, actually, we're not getting into this. We're not getting Why into not? this. No, this is actually something I will not talk about in the podcast because I, I don't even know if I can say this. Let's just say this. I know of someone who keeps up regularly with the show. Oh, yeah? Yes. So we're not talking about that. Bro, how are you going to say we got to, what is it? Uh, uh, oh, here we go. Here we go. A yeah. little game for us, and then don't even play the game. Come oh, on, bro. See, you see, you see, actually, I'm, I feel like a full uh, Hippocrates right now. They're really coming for me, guys. Absolutely. I, I'm, they're fuck, they fucked me up behind the scenes. They beat me up. They curved stuff, <laughs> especially. He's over. He's overreacting. I'm not. But <laughs> uh, overreaction to Wednesday. So, in a fatal four-way. Shit. To the death. Okay. Ooh. You get to pick. Okay. Who is going to win this? Okay. Wait. We, one person wins. One person wins. Okay. Okay. You got Liam Neeson from Taken. All his exploits in all his movies. He has the same movies. Stop. Like, I'm talking his... about in Taken. Wait, wait, wait. Taken one through three. This is a fight or like this for is a fight. Or yeah. who's like a good movie? No, it's a fight to okay. the death. Fight Liam to... Neeson is one of these people. Next Ow. person. The Equalizer. Mm. Ow. No, we got well, listen. All of his movies, all the things he's done. Are these old, all these are are these all old men? Let me finish. The next person, the Punisher. Okay. And then last but not least, in all his movies, John Wick, and oh, a battle Ooh. to the death. Who would y'all take? Who are you taking money I, on? One survive. Who survives? I either got the Punisher or John Wick. John. No, Wick. no, you got to pick one, man. Those are the clear two, of hey, course. Hold up, let me finish. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. You, can you wait? Okay, okay. Yeah, my apologies. <laughs> Man. The Punisher, the you know, the Punisher does his thing. But John Wick John Wick be out there, you know, slang slanging. So uh you know, he got he got the that accuracy with them pistols. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, he might that shootout ain't gonna last very long. The Punisher gotta run up on somebody, so uh, I'm taking John Wick. All right. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I'm taking John Wick. Wow. Not just better movie. That's true, uh, too. Uh, but, yeah, no, John Wick is a badass. And it's, it's Keanu Reeves. He's the chosen one. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, wow. I've, wow. I, I can't believe we're finally going to do this. We finally all agree on something. Oh, I, wow. John Wick, I uh, say yeah. John Wick okay. will win that fight. I mean, you gave us like two other horrible ones. Those guys would break their back before they win a fight. Hey, hey, we're talking about <laughs> Equalizer in his prime. He was at the end of his prime in the movie. Can we? Was he not? All right now. Horrible. Liam Neeson. Horrible. Actually, mm. he's all hot. his movies are the same, bro. He don't beat up nobody. Yeah, he does. Except wolves. He don't really beat up nobody, bro. He, somebody took his daughter. He sneak up, yeah, in all the movies. How many kids he got? In all <laughs> the movies. <laughs> How many kids he got, bro? <laughs> I hate you all. I hate you all. All right, that was quick. Fun enough. fact about Liam Neeson, real quick. Go ahead. Uh, anyone listening, if you want to have a really good laugh, just type in Liam Nees- Neeson piss. There's like. 15, 20 photos of different occasions of Liam Neeson being publicly drunk, like peeing his pants. Interesting. I, I, I found that on TikTok. That's random. It's super random, Y'all but there's just a bunch of pictures TikTok. of Liam Neeson with like piss on his pants. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Uh, you know, fun fact. I know, I know one listener is definitely going to look that up. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I'm glad the listeners are getting a whole level of because I would have never Googled that. Yeah, You're welcome. Not. Absolutely not. So let's just jump straight into it, gentlemen. I yes. have some things, but we were actually Astro, I mean, Disaster World. Yeah, as I call it. Damn. Yikes. Disaster World. Damn. Even though when this comes out, we will, this will be, actually, this will always be a comment of, talk, you know, we will always be talking about this, but. Who and then it's not me because I really wasn't paying attention too much. But um, I have some points I know about it. But who wants to talk about what happened at? I mean, I could start. Uh, so, Go ahead, yeah. Um, Astro World is a concert that Travis Scott puts on. Well, he won't be putting it on anymore. Warner. But he puts on usually every year. Um, this, well, this is the second year of it, um, and so it takes place in Houston, Texas, um, where he's from, and um, it's like multiple day concert. This was this actually happened day one, which is crazy. Um, and so this at this time, uh, he's putting on the concert, and from the get go, it just was ugly. Um, yeah, you could see thousands of people just bomb rushing the entrance gates, yep, going yep, yep. through security, jumping fences to get in. Um, and I mean, and you could tell it's kids, young adults, like all different ages, but it, it mainly looked like kids to me. Like I 13 was, to 16 year old yeah, kids. 13 to 18. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, a very, very younger age crowd, but that's, that's like where his music that's is. That's a demographic. Felt, yeah. Right. Like babies. He got his music in, in freaking, uh, what's that game called? Uh, Fortnite. Was, Fortnite. Yep. You got the whole concert. Fortnite, Fortnite guy. Yeah. So it's like, that's his demographic. So it doesn't surprise me. Like. Who shows up at his concerts? Oh, yeah. Um, but anyway, to go to speak, uh, concert's going on. It gets to a point where it gets too crowded. And what they've come to find out now is that people are getting actually stabbed in the neck with drugs. So people are running around stabbing people in the back. Allegedly. The with drugs. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. That's what they're looking into now. And so it ended up like 10 people died. It was like kids who died. Um, people were also dying of suffocation because there were so many people. Mm-hmm. Um, There's a lot of mosh pits that broken out. Um, yeah. So my question to you guys is, what are your thoughts on it um, as a whole? Yeah, I guess I can go first. Um, <clears throat> so I've seen a lot of clips uh, on TikTok of people who are at the uh, who are at Astro World, and they're like, mm-hmm. "Here was my first hand experience." It was very interesting. Uh, they had a lot of clips showing like people trying to get Travis's attention, trying to get uh, attention of like people that were on the stage, like staff, mm. uh, cameramen, all this stuff. Mm. Majority of that, what I saw, they were being shoot shoot away. Even when they were saying like, "Hey, people are dying," they're just tell, told to like leave. Mm. Other like other fan people in the crowd were like, "Oh, they'll be fine, man. Leave it alone. Whatever." That's what I saw. Um, there are moments where like. People are really getting on Travis right now because he didn't stop the show. 
and I, and I and I get that point of view because he didn't really like he was told by someone like people are getting trampled. He like stopped for a second, was like, "Hey, move, guys, let's get help to that guy," and then immediately just like turned around and started singing again. So I think that's where like the criticism is coming to Travis to where like it should have stopped completely and like cleared out so that like paramedics, paramedics and like uh, ambulances could actually come into the crowds versus where like he just he, he just kept going on. But my thing to you is there's if you look at the video and see how many people there are, mm -hmm. that ambulance is going to be a while for it get get to where I need to be. Oh, yeah. And, and that and that for me is my like like I, I'm not saying Travis is right for what he did but i don't think travis is the main culprit for what no what happened i i right? blame like, i blame the event holders more the yeah, venue yeah absolutely. i blame those two much more because if you look uh from what they were describing to the way the stage was made mm -hmm. there were two like um uh, um what is it called um agid no um acute like angles mm -hmm. where like as people crowded in towards the stage that was kind of like a a bottleneck and that's where a lot of people were getting like smushed because of the architecture of the the way the stage and the the venue was set up mm. so that okay. is like a big reason why it was going on what about you robert um you know like i uh one i, I think you both did an excellent job of eloquently talking about it bringing up you know both those perspectives um one because I want to make sure that this is at least on tape before this goes out that um, on just behalf of the show and, you know, I know uh, these guys can speak for themselves. I just want to say for, you know, for people who lost their lives when it comes to this, um, condolences to the victims and the families. Yeah. Um, no one should, you know, lose their lives, especially when, you know, you spend the hard earned bread to see your artists because we know um, how artists make us feel. Um, but, you know... I think I want to do a job of like talking and like I want to. I guess I just want to walk a fine line and be very respectful to the to the to the point of like I get it when it comes to Travis. Like your name's on the event, but at the end of the day, um, I think Costa was just saying it too, where it's kind of like the venue holder, and then on top of that, um, I don't know if anyone any one of you have ever like performed or anything like that. I performed at like, um, I was in a African American, um, group called the perspective gents club. It's about, uh, getting African American males to, uh, know more about their heritage and matriculate, having them matriculate to college and no, it wasn't on some Umar Johnson shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> It was more so about learning more about history they didn't teach in school, which is currently um, at odds with, you know, what do they fucking call it now? Critical race theory. Oh, yeah. Like in Texas and all that other stuff. So uh, the stuff that y'all don't want to talk about, that's what that group did. So shout out to them. And the reason why I'm bringing it up is like there was like a lot of partnerships and stuff with them. And like we would perform on Nike's campus where they, if any of you are familiar with like uh, Step. Or like stomp the yard yep. for the people. Mm -hmm. So I used to step and things like that, and we would go on the Nike campus or the in Portland and the all near Snitcher Hard, and we put yep. on these big performances. Yep. Mm -hmm. And like when you're focused on performing, like you only see the very first two rows. And like I would say the Snitcher Hall, the Nike campus were the only like they're a decently sized campus, and a bit of SEI too as well. Where I'm kind of like, ah, you can kind of make out, especially in the evening, especially at the Snitzer Hall. You can only see, like, a few things. And, like, yeah. if you're looking really, like, if you're, like, paying attention to the crowd, you're not really paying attention to your performance. So mm -hmm. I can only imagine times in that by, like, 50 and having, like, half, like, 40 billion. I said 40, say not 40. Having that amount of people. So I would say, like, this is one of those things where, like, people have to, like, share and have to understand that balance because there are also instances that I did see that he is like, Oh, like you said, let's stop. Like I see some people, but like, <laughs> how do you expect for that guy to see all those other people and things like that? Like what is security doing? You know? And then people may hate me for this, but like in my mind, because I know what kind of music Travis Scott is and about, I'm not taking my seven year old to the Travis Scott concert at all. Uh -huh. Like he's not ready. 
Like absolutely. That's that's your first concert, yeah. Travis Scott. <laughs> yeah. No, like it, my thing is I don't want to put anything on you know that kid who's in the coma and things like that. But it's kind of like it's almost kind of like we kind of talked about what's like everybody. Everyone in this situation has responsibility. The yeah. crowd has responsibility. The security has responsibility. Yeah. Travis Scott has responsibility. No one is like prickly clean with yeah. this whole situation. And I just sorry to be long winded, but that's how I really feel about it. Yeah, yeah. I Everyone have, has a part. I have to I have to really agree to the the to all of that. You know, like you it can't just be Travis getting the blame or Drake getting the blame because they have the most money out of everybody, right? Like. A ten-year-old shouldn't be at that event. Seven-year-old shouldn't be at that event, right? Like, that—that's parenting. Like, that's parenting right there. Like, I get it. Yeah, you can have him listen to the music, whatever. But at the end of the day, like, you gonna have him go there knowing that there's drugs there, knowing that there's t- thousands of people there. Knowing, like, but that's just all a recipe of disaster. Like, and even and my biggest thing is like. Even if I pay for my ticket to get in there and I realize and I see all these people there and they start showing up and crashing it, I'm not going, never mind. I'm going to turn around because it already looked like a recipe for disaster. Like, mm-hmm. and I think that's where a lot of people forget too. Like, it started out the gate bad. Yeah. yeah. It started yeah. out, it, it wasn't like the concert started and this bad stuff happened. No, it started out the gate. Like, they were opening up the doors and they was getting trampled and people's getting stomped out and people's getting hurt and people had to stop people like out the gate. So it's like, in that point I'm turning around and I'm all right, I'm a, I'm a head to head somewhere else. Cause it's, it doesn't look like it's going to be something good. So Yeah. I don't know about you guys personally. I've never been a big concert guy in general. Hmm. Um, I just don't like the experience of concerts. I don't. I don't love big crowds, especially like concert big crowds where like you're shoulder to shoulder with mm-hmm. random people. Um, like uh, last concert I went to was Tyler the Creator and Vince Staples. I want more to see Vince Staples. <laughs> just want to make that clear. <laughs> Even though I'm wearing a beanie, not a Tyler guy, uh, but nonetheless. <laughs> um, and you just I don't know, dude. The way people act in that environment. Um, and just like they almost throw away their like just their like human like interactive abilities and their like natural compassion mm. for just like almost an animalistic instinct. Like even at the Travis mm. Scott concert, they were like crowd surfing a dead body. Huh? Yeah. Like they were like passing it like this. Mm. Wow. Um, so it's just like and that's like wow. Same with, like, the the EDM-style concert I'm not a fan of where people only go there to just, like, do, like, a bunch of psychedelic drugs and lose themselves. Great. Yeah, because, you know, they have they live, like, stressful lives and they need an escape. And I get that, but it's, like, I just, I don't think that's healthy for our society to be, like, that. that's how we need to escape. But that's just my personal opinion. Mm. Uh, I, I, I could totally I, be wrong. I also look at it like this is what a lot of people don't understand, too, as well, where it's kind of, like, uh, you brought up a very excellent point that like the animalistic things, right? Where it's kind of like during Black Friday, same, yeah. People punch people in the face for PS fives, <laughs> like literally, or yeah. like you cut me for the latest Pokemon game, like I'll kill you, like it's real, yeah, it's real out there, yeah. and like that's why I don't like big crowds. I feel like it just brings that side of humans out, and then you know, you know, kind of like you know, a little bit of like even with. Uh, the whole, uh, I guess, taking it back to like the whole Travis thing too, as well, where, you know, I felt like his response and, you know, once again, by me just, and this is talking about my feelings, not critiquing or saying he needs to do anything else or anything like that. But he did say that, you know, he's going to take care of the funeral costs of, of the victims. I feel like that's, you know, a really good thing for him to, you know, do just to do. Because I really, I honestly do feel and believe that he really cares about his fans and, like, he, like, knows that they put him in this situation. But it's almost kind of like I did say if we – and I was looking at some of the history of Travis Scott. Like, there was a guy who lost his uh, – he became a paraplegic at a, con- uh, at a concert at one of his. Oh, wow. Because, like, he was like, you should just jump. And he was like in a two story, like at a two story level, and he jumped. And Uh-oh. then he land. Oh, he said, jump. They're going to catch you or something like that. And then, like, he jumped. And they all cleared. 
No, nobody. <laughs> yeah, he's in a wheelchair. Nobody got him. <laughs> like, if you're jumping from two stories and you're a regular, let's say you're just an average male plus gravity, do you really think the crowd, like anyone yeah, who tries no. to get you, you're going to break an arm? You're going to, like, yeah. maybe if it's a I baby. I would catch you. Maybe if it's a baby, it's still, yeah. still going to get hurt. So it's just kind of like, where's that? And this is what we talk about on the show so much, where it's kind of like, where's the responsibility? We're like, I, I don't get me wrong, instigating, there, there are laws about instigating, right? Yeah. But it gets to a point where I'm like, like, Travis Scott, you like him that much for like, I, I have so much affinity and connection for Kevin Durant. And why I like Kevin Durant is he's like, oh, I'm tired of being second. And I feel like, you know, I feel like I'm second for a lot of different things. If Kevin Durant was like, Robert, give me your social security number. I'd be like, nigga, what are you smoking? <laughs> like, I like, and I just find, I don't know how you guys feel, but like for the people you idolize or things like that, like where does the buck stop? Where like, yeah. like. Where does yeah. your like? Nah, I'm not gonna do that. Even though I have mad respect for you. Like, oh yeah. yeah. Why is that? Or where are you all at with that? Or yeah. I'm crazy. We begin to to not dehumanize, but like put our put our favorite people on these pedestals and idols, and and whatever they say is what goes. Instead of not realizing that they're human beings too, they're just mm-hmm. like you and me. They might just have more money than you, or they do have more money than you. Who cares? They're still human. And mm-hmm. I think we for we lose that. Like, we have this sense of, like, I can understand, like, uh, being starstruck. Like, you see somebody you really like, and you see them for the first time, and you're like, oh, my God, that's so-and-so. I can understand being starstruck. But to the point where everything they say you do, and you kiss the feet, or kiss their feet, or praise the ground that they walk on, man, they're normal human beings, man. And a lot of times those celebrities want to be treated like normal human beings. Why? Because they're people. Mm-hmm. And I think we, we've gotten to this point where we've gotten lost in that. We don't mm-hmm. treat people like people anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Me personally, I've kind of, as I've gotten older, I've shied away from making like other people my idols. Mm-hmm. Cause I found that like the more you get to know them or like, as like time goes on and like, you know, people make mistakes. It's just like you realize, like you know, you don't really know that person mm-hmm. unless like you're actually like one on one with them. Yeah, I, I'd rather look up to someone like my mom or my dad, someone I know mm. every day, and someone who like I've grown up seeing and I can appreciate. Versus like, like I, I, I still am a fan, but I used to be a huge like Conor McGregor fan, mm. and that you know was really eye opening in that aspect because you know i got to see him you know huh. as like his career kind of took a downturn these antics that he do like punching old men throwing a dolly at a bus doing this type of stuff cheating on his wife here and there you realize you know what it's doesn't even it's not even worth it to idolize like another person i can look up to people i can appreciate what people have done in terms of hard work but in terms of like like i know someone who has a damian lillard an odo beckham jr and a justin bieber tattoo on his arm <laughs> All detailed portraits of all three people, <laughs> and yeah, that's my response exactly, dude. I did. I I met the guy. He's a friend of a friend, someone who may we may have on the podcast soon. He's a friend. I, I will still laugh. Yeah, but I just like I had to ask to see them because he told me he had him. I said I don't believe you. I don't. I so I had to ask either. to see him, and why? I said, like, why? That's Bro. so. That's so stupid. I think it's of all like, like OBJ too. Like you see the whole thing going on right now with but, OBJ. But like I mean, it's like, like. What about this person makes you? You don't even know I'm this person. A tattoo on him, like, like you don't even know this person. I don't know. I, I don't get it. The only way I can equate that to, and what I felt, what I feel like is even more permanent in my opinion is like, growing up, where it's kind of like I look for like more male role model figures and stuff for mm-hmm. me when I was growing up, and uh, you all can Google this. It's a show called Record Seven, mm-hmm. um, and. It was literally literally about an adolescent uh, teen boy growing up, talking about racism, government, mm-hmm. you know, interracial love, all that good shit. I feel like it was a great balance of all that stuff in an anime, right? And, like, at a time where I was, like, I was wanting and thinking I was going to get, like, a tattoo. I was like, oh, I'm going to get this, you know, get, get something tatted. And I was like, nah the greatest honor and respect I can give to that show is like, actually I'm going to make something that this writer created. And I'm going to put it into like real life where like my daughter will have the middle name of one of the, 
the characters in the show mm. where I'm like, that's permanent. Like, obviously, you know, some of the names, good first, like, I would like it as the first name, but I don't think I'm going to get that. But I was like, I feel like that's the most respectful thing. Or like, hey, I make some shit, right? Some tangible things. Like, all right, I, I build a center. And it's, you know, I was inspired by this. I feel like it's so easy for people to get a tattoo. And not dissing people who get the tattoos because tattoos have, you know, th- that meaning, things like that. But, like, at the end of the day, right, like, I guess this is just what I'm about. It's like being different where I'm like, you know, and this middle name is just for my baby girl in the future. Like this came from your dad figuring out shit. Like this name means something like whether if you want to be your nickname or whatever, like this is for life. And if the writers and actually one of the voice actors died, if they ever see this, I'm like, yeah, I actually not named my daughter or I named like, that's how deep it was for me. But yeah, that's a that is a, a Mount Rushmore right there. What? <laughs> I don't think I could do that. What? The, J, the OBJ Lillard and uh, yeah Lillard who Justin Bieber. What's, what's the Lillard who like? Let's be real. He cheats on his baby mama. I, I didn't say that. <laughs> Just stories I've heard, but I, I've, ever on the Portland circuit. I'm, OBJ who likes to get pooped on, <laughs> and Justin Bieber who yells at his wife in public. Hey, hey! From actually, <laughs> I'm about to take the Arthur stance. How do you know they was arguing? How do you know he was the only one yelling? She maybe she was yelling at him first. We just I'm caught just, that side. No, you're right. You're right. I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. But no, my I boy learned it. I, I I think it's almost better to just idolize a character from a show because everything mm. about the character you know. That character isn't going after after the show airs <laughs> behind the scenes and beating his <laughs> wife at home or something. That that is very true as as a thing. Um, yeah, and I guess getting us back on track with uh, the Travis thing, you know, I just hope that at the end of the day, that um, you know, because we was talking about we was talking about like some forward progress where like I just hope the concert going experience, no matter at what level, that we all. Uh, are more responsible and when I say more responsible yeah. not just from our artists just from like Across understand yeah but, or I understand we've been in a pandemic and all that you spent money but like I would just think of myself like me just watching people do all that hopping over and stuff like that yeah. I'm not gonna lie if it was like bump to bumping and like if I didn't jump I was gonna be up under and stuff I would start like I gotta leave like and I like yeah. and like I think concert going is like I see the benefits and I would have been like, this is too much. Mm-hmm. This is too like, so like as as a society, what can we do to enhance the you know experience mm-hmm. where like you know we all can enjoy that music live because live music. Yeah, let yeah. me tell you, live music. When you hear that gospel, when you like Vince Staples was very good. He was see, very good. Okay. much better than Tyler. No, yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, that, that's at least on me. <laughs> so to kind of go to that progress piece, there is a, a Rih- uh, Rihanna, Tiana Taylor had done a concert. Mm. A little bit after Travis Scott. Mm. Travis Scott. Travis. Travis Straight Scott. up. Straight yeah. up. Yeah. Concert. Um, and mm. a girl was getting pushed and passed out, was mm. passing out in the concert, kind of t- more towards the front row like you brought up. Like, mm. you could see the person. Yeah. And she had her security guard grab her, bring her over the barrier, sit her down in the front. Mm. And she, you know, she threw her little side comment. I'm not gonna have no Travis Scott shit, but uh, <laughs> but it was like a reflection on like progress, which you you said yeah. right. But at the end of the day, it's like you said before that too. If there's thousands of people there and waves of people in the, you're not gonna see little Tom Tom in the back back there who's passing out or getting mm-hmm. pushed. You're not gonna see him. Like yeah. So it's like it. Like you said, be be cautious of what you're going into before you go into it. Don't just go into it blindfolded. Yeah, yeah. Be a fucking human. Like yeah. if like you that don't too. have to be doing you're doing like security, <clears throat> like I'm but I'm saying just be human. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But and don't forget to get your Travis Scott meals at McDonald's for a limited time only. <laughs> <laughs> you don't hit my line no more. <laughs> you, you, you don't make it ring, ring, baby who Ah man. Um <laughs> We're gonna do uh our our next bit and I just want to um get everyone's thoughts on I feel like was there something else before I had the thing that I had? Um someone else wanted to bring up really No, quick? I think we I think we're just we had 
this, the icebreaker, and then the topic you're about to pull up now. Uh, I don't think it's an icebreaker, but... Uh, no, the, the first one. Uh, all right, um, so, this will be a shorter episode for the folks who are listening, but... Uh, this will be a nice commute podcast on your way to work and on your way back. Of course. Um, we have these things, and I want to hit you all with mm. this. So, I, a listener, actually, like a month ago, hit me up about shout out to the, all the listeners out there yes shout out to all the listeners Hit shout me up out shout out and was asking my opinion on alpha and beta males and he mm. also told me that there are six other characteristics of like male personalities so there's alpha beta versus gamma omega and delta versus sigma so before i go through that i i what are people's reaction to their various versions of males? So when I when I first heard this, I w- the first thing I thought of was fraternities. I just have to be honest. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, that's, Arthur's not far off. Like that's the first thing I I thought of. Delta Phi for baby. me, and I I've never really Don't heard of it. That. They'll never come. Never really they heard of it as us. like characteristics in that manner, but like I've heard of fraternity characteristics. So to speak, does that make sense? Like, there's mm. yeah, people yeah, yeah. in fraternity. Each, each fraternity is a little different. You yeah, got, yeah, and the you got people the, the within that fraternity are a little bit one. different. Yeah. And yep. So it's like when you talk about these characteristics, and now that you bring them out, it makes me think of it even more. It's like it kind of fits, so to speak, with the fraternity mantra and idea of mm. what each one kind of represents. Um, mm. And so I, I'm curious, you know, I, I'm curious to, about this conversation. So I, I I've I've gone around the circle with the the alpha male versus the beta male conversation it's someone who like seeks an identity because they don't have a personality <laughs> <laughs> oh sorry did that slip uh yeah i've been around the circle i know alpha beta and um what's the other one you have beta alpha and then what's i'll go through i'll go through it's there's one uh, that's like the gamma submissive. omega delta and sigma sigma yeah so i've heard of sigma beta it, and alpha it's so ironically that a person was I was talking with a person about like a random question and mm-hmm. they were like so a guy told me that he's an alpha male and what does that oh, mean to you God. and I said if a guy's like if, or, or if a person I definitely know it's a guy I was like oh, I'm an alpha male I was like I was like do you walk up and say I'm a very feminine woman no I'll tell you that right now. I'll tell you he's a clown. <laughs> no, if, was, yeah. If you if you announce you're an alpha male, it just means you're insecure. I have now. I yeah. don't want to get this confused. When I say I'm a real nigga, <laughs> I'm just giving you a warning that I'm a real nigga. Real saying I'm a real nigga versus I'm not alpha are two different things. Just want to make that very clear. But I was telling this person that if like it's almost kind of like if a female's like I have masculine energy, right? If a female's telling you that. You should you should back up unless you want some masculine energy. Like if someone has to tell you that, yeah, I'm a I'm a dog. I'm a dog. I I feel like a lot of the people that and we're talking about like the people we idolize have that mentality. Before Jordan started talking shit, Jordan knew he was a shit. He just did that to get you off your thing and just be like, yeah, I'm yeah, I'll yeah. just pull up with a cigar and be like, I'm gonna fuck with you. And I just feel like even more now that people and just like you were saying cost just use this alpha beta thing almost like star signs oh that's a good that's a good analogy mm. Mm. so they want an identity yeah instead of just mm. being true and rock with yourself we're like hey for my homeboys who are listening right now who's still rocking with pokemon you can still you can still get a dime piece you just don't mention it on the first date you just got to be passionate about it. You see what I'm saying? He's into it. Because she going to rock with you if you're confident. He's like, yeah, Man. I'm with Pokemon, right? And then when she, oh, you with the NFT. Yeah, you get Charizard. It's a, it's a down payment on the house. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because if she, if you, it's almost kind of like this confidence thing. Like, if somebody knows you, like, yeah. you don't give a fuck what people think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They'll respect that. Man, that's real. So, we're going to go down the wheel of, we've heard of, Alpha, we're gonna go. So they say an alpha male, he's confident, he's outgoing, and he's a leader. And then, uh, oh, he's charismatic, 
Do we all Zam? Do we all Zam. agree with that? Zam, yes. Zam, that sounds like me, Zam. Ew. Okay. <laughs> beta male. A beta <laughs> male is friendly. He's reserved. He is submissive. He's loyal. How do you all feel about that? Zam, that sounds like me too, Zam. Oh, here we go. Here we fucking <laughs> yeah, like like a spineless guy. I like this website because they didn't make it. They didn't make negative. it a negative thing. They which like in our negative. society, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, do, they do make like. Why a take away the fun? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm, just saying. I'm glad you picked up. Yeah. All right. The one here's a new one. This is new to me. Gamma male. Ew. I feel like a part of the Ginyu Force. <laughs> I hear that one male. forever. Uh, for me, that sounds like Iota. Oh. Iota. Oh, I don't know that is. Fraternity, man. Oh, come on, oh. now. Divine Nine. Oh, 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 okay. There we go. Divine Thank Nine. You. Learn your, learn your shit. Mm. Gamma male. He is adventurous. He is eager. Mm. He is aware. Mm-hmm. He is empathetic. Ooh. I kind of be. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. This is the first one I'm kind of like fucking with. I'm like, all right. No, my that sounds like me too. Uh, Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any complaints from hearing that or anything? You're no. Like, whatever. All right. No. Y'all ready for the Omega male? Yeah, let's go. Omega. The nasty. He is self-assured. The dirty dog. He is driven. He is intelligent. Mm. He has diversified interests. Oh. Oh. Oh, I might be Omega. Oh, that sounds like me. On too. Zordon. Oh. <laughs> on Zordon. Oh, on God. Are y'all ready for the last meal? That sounds yeah. like me, too. A Delta male. Delta. He is resigned. Ooh, okay. He is resentful. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> he is self sabotaging. Yeah. Okay. Oh. He, sounds, uh, he is lonely. Okay. Sound like you? This is Hell no, they don't sound like me. <laughs> and, la- <laughs> and last but not least, we have Sigma Male. He is cunning. Oh. Okay. Wait, I think we got one. He is self confident. Okay. I'm rocking with the Omega more. He is likable. Okay. Uh, that fucking guy over there. <laughs> Everyone hates me. <laughs> <laughs> he is calculated. Okay. This is you? Yeah, that's the, you okay. Know, okay, you know they sound like me too. You know what I'm saying? So they all sound like me besides Delta. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this website was really good because they did a really good job of just giving you just the facts and you coming with your own interpretation. Yeah. Now, because this person and I actually respect this person's opinion so much, hearing all the others before I get into our last activity before we end for the day, um, how did y'all like once again? Y'all, maybe you kept the same thing. Was it hogwash to y'all? What do y'all think? I think I think for me, because I don't know too much, like, on the personality side of things. Talking to the mic. I don't know too much on the person, personality side of things when it comes to that. Um, just, like, more being more descriptive of it. But from my interpretation of what you said, um, they, I mean, they seem like, uh, I'm, I'm curious if they... If you can be more than one, right? Like, Ooh. you know, you because some of those characteristics they kind of translate or they kind of push over into the next one. Like, yeah. you can be a charismatic leader, right? Like, you can be a you can be a, a person who's lonely but is you know has some other areas of interest. You know, like doing things on their own, right? Like, mm-hmm. so it's like how how do you take that interpretation or how do you gravitate towards one thing specifically? <sighs> Like, I think it's like a kind of like a touch point, right? Like, I feel more like this one, but I also have this one in me and that one in me and this one in me. And I think this is where we go back to where we started, right? Like, Mm. if somebody coming in talking about, yeah, I'm an alpha male, I'm a, you know, you look real stupid because you might have some of the other stuff too as well. Damn right. Yeah. Mm, is it hogwash maybe a little, i think majority yes mm. but you know what if it helps you to identify to a specific category yeah. gives you confidence makes you feel i don't know more comfortable with yourself do whatever do whatever you gotta do man i don't, I don't care all right um but you won't be ca- catching me making sigma male vlog videos <laughs> <laughs> so are you a sigma so if we had to pick and you get what you get the characteristics that are in the thing 
I'm sorry, of course. Out of all the things you heard today, mm-hmm. mm. what kind of male are you? I don't know. I don't think you can pick yourself. I don't think you can pick one for yourself. I think you can. No, I think someone has to tell you uh, because otherwise everyone's going to pick like that's the ones true. that sound the best. I have to I have to agree with that statement. Okay. I, I have We're to. doing it. I All right. To. I like a remix. So okay. we we have an odd number. So we'll Rochambeau this. So whoever wins Rochambeau, they get pick who they want to do. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to start with class first and then whoever I win and we'll go back. All right. Okay. Well, why, don't y'all, why don't y'all just pick for me and we pick for you and then we and pick then, for him. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Also make it fun. So you and I pick for Arthur. All right. Oh, shit. I, eat. I already forgot all of them. <laughs> all right. I'll, re- I'll say him off again. Well, he I said he was all of them. So we got. He say it was all of them. So we got Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Omega, Delta, and Sigma. What are you thinking? Like, one of the things that came off to me about Ar- Arthur that I think is I think I think he's really cool with is I think a, he's a Sigma. He a Delta ass nigga. No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, nah, I actually want to say this. He's a Sigma male. When um, yeah. and I'm using my therapy. And I'm sorry, I I'm not therapizing people, but it's like when you are trained to like look at body language. Like he like to me, in my opinion, he like perked up a little bit more when I talked about cunning. Mm-hmm. And being like cunning, and like people see being cunning as like, like crafty or like trickery. I see cunning as being like calculated and smart. And then it went to being self confident, and then being very likable. And then yeah. he is, and then it also said being calculated. I was like, to me, I was like that screams mm-hmm. our guy. Interesting. Okay. Do you agree with that? I mean, I, I mean, it's your opinion. I don't know. So. Do I agree? I don't know. Those characteristics are a part of who I am. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'd say I, def- a sigma. I definitely have some of the other ones too. So it's just interesting to see that you guys would call me a Sigma man. So that's just interesting. You know, I'm not hating on it. Whatever. Right. Whatever. So okay. who's opinion. next? You. Me? So who wants to do who wants to do Bob? Mm, Bobby Bobby. So I'll let the I'll let the I'll let me look at these real quick. I'm I'm for beta, gamma. I, truthfully, like can you name them again? Alpha, okay. beta, gamma, uh, omega. omega, delta, and sigma. I think he is uh, gamma. That's what it, exactly what I was thinking. Wow. What's in a gamma yeah. again? He is adventurous. Yeah. He is uh-huh. eager. Mm-hmm. He is aware. Mm-hmm. And those are the three. And that's what makes you a good what psychologist. What the fuck? Yeah. That's what, makes you, that's what makes you good at your job. Because mm-hmm. you like to step outside the box, which makes you adventurous. You you're aware, so you you become aware of how people feel. And he their stands emotions. out among other types of men in his ability to be aware of his actions and how those actions affect others. Yep, Ooh. let's go. <laughs> and and it it literally like it helps you determine people how you see people and how you can relate to people in different environments. And so being able to sit across the table and talk to somebody, you have to be aware of where they're coming from and where where place they're going into. Bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> okay, it's crazy because I was saying it in my head, yeah, and then you said it out loud. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so we gotta do this. We gotta do this, nigga, right now. Delta. Nobody like him. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> nobody like him. <laughs> um, what you do? Go ahead. Go get get a, get, a, get, a, get, a, get a get a get a scroll. I I have a I trust what you're gonna pick. I'll just say this. I definitely trust what you picked. So, right out the gate, I don't feel like uh, Costa is an alpha male just from from. So this. you don't have a penis. Um, <laughs> I actually don't. But it's just a huge hole. But truthfully, <laughs> truthfully, I, I hate to say this, but I would say you're a, a, a beta male because you're friendly, uh, you're reserved. Um, you're also, but you have a way of submitting, and it's not like the submissive and like. <laughs> Taking the back seat submissive, but like, yeah. um, but then you're very loyal to like everyone around you. So it's the last trait of beta male is one of the biggest strengths is <laughs> he's very loyal. Um, <laughs> one reason why beta male is a very good friend is because he's loyal to those who respect him and are friendly towards, are friendly towards him. And I, I feel like that, that fits you to a T because you're willing to go above and beyond for your friends 
even if your friends aren't doing you well. Mm. Um, no, Kaz is a spiteful motherfucker. Mm. Depends on my mood. I had to talk him off the ledge a few times. Off the ledge of what? Mm, you want me talking? <laughs> about yeah, you want me, you want me talk about what, that? What do you What do you say? Once again, another reason why I picked this website because it talks about things in a positive mindset. Mm-hmm. Where like the way you crafted it. And like my re- initial reaction to like beta maleness is like, oh yeah, because people use it as an insult. Or it's kind of like, oh, he's definitely not that. But like when you're reading it off, where it's kind of like some of the things you're talking about when it comes to, we're like, we're like, what a lot of people don't understand is like people who are quiet, that doesn't mean that they're, they're going to take shit. We're like, mm-hmm. I will just say this, like starting the show, like cost, even though I don't think cost will take this as disrespectful, or like, you know, sometimes I was like, talk just be you right but like even still when he wasn't talking as much he still was able to command his yeah. mission and like when it comes to being reserved like mm-hmm. he's very reserved yeah and like there's nothing wrong with that people just no. take reservedness as oh he's being weak or he's being quiet mm-hmm. or whatever and then people think of being submissive as being like a weak thing and like people don't understand there's so many you there are people you have to answer to Absolutely. No matter what, there's and always going to be an alpha male in the room, and it's not, it's not even about an alpha male. It's just, but so to speak, to go with this, right? There's always going to be someone who tries to dominate the space. There's nothing wrong with being submissive because at the end of the day, your voice is still going to be heard eventually. Yeah, and then also too as well, where people don't know what a, you know it is to like take a knee. Mm. And no, I'm not talking about Colin Kaepernick. I'm talking <laughs> about being able to like, I'm willing. Not to die on a hill, but I'm willing to bite the bullet for this person. Yeah. Because I see something bigger. Yeah. And, like, yeah, that's yeah. a trait that belongs in the family. That's a trait yeah. that belongs with a, you know, a loving relationship. Because everyone is all about me, 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 me. And that, in that sense, is more a team-oriented mindset. And as a person who tries to work with people to understand systems... And this framework of how they have beta male is you understand the system and you know you're just a cog within it. So, and you're a loyal motherfucker. So, fall. Maybe. But I will say this I do slightly disagree. Okay. Because I slightly disagree because Nothing I've wrong. known him longer. Okay. And I've seen different things about this cat where, um, like, this is why I wanted him to speak, and this is why I see him as an Omega male. Okay. That because, was my next choice. Because the self-assured stuff, because when, a long story short, I was his, you know, peer mentor. Yeah. And, like, he would, like, because I got to see his writing and shit. Like, he would have a lot of shit to say, but he would just never talk. But, like. <laughs> but my, talking. Yeah, but the thing is, like, when he talked, he talked. People, like, shut up and fucking listen. And, like, having him more on the show and shit like that, yeah. like, all the clips, like all of like our best clips, are him just going on a cost rent because like he doesn't care. Like he's like, this is how I am. Fucking balls on the table. So like that screamed to me, you as well. And then even though I have to prog and poke this dude, like he's very driven, like in his own thoughts. Yeah. But, like he was thinking about stuff I was thinking about when I was a junior in college. Where like he's like, hey Rob, you know I see what you're doing. So like he has, he, like he has that. And then last but not least, he's very intelligent. His intelligence. Is very very different. Oh, absolutely, and absolutely. <laughs> that's what that's what threw me off with the age thing. See, see. Yeah. But the other thing is like you know, there's diversified <laughs> interests, and I'll end it on this. We all have diversified interests. We all bring yeah. wonderful things. <clears throat> um, uh, look at us, you know, bigging up the the young buck of the show. Um, <laughs> but at the end of the day, um, let's just say this. Uh, next time y'all see us, we're going to be fucking stunting. We're going to be like, uh, uh, what's his name? I stay flossing in that Mike candy Jones. bank. Mike bank. Sipping drinks on 80 pound. Tearing up the lake. Tearing up the lake. We just called you intelligent. Come on. I appreciate it. Thank you. Mike Jones. Now, um, if you like what we're doing, if you want to you know, be a part of us, no commercial today because uh, next time you see us, we're going to be in a you know special place, you know. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> um, just know, just mark it, you know, you know, every oh, state man. got one of these. Yeah. Just know we probably won't be here again. 
<laughs> Get used to the gray walls. We might be back. We're the best mobile mm-hmm. podcast of all time. Mm-hmm. Anywho. Get yes. used to the gray walls. Anywho, this has uh, been the Play No Pod Game. Yeah, yeah. Fucking bullshit. Play No Games podcast slash show. show. And we out. Peace. You probably wonder if I think of you. Sorry, I'm for the bag right now. Yeah, I'm for the bag right now. Yeah, for the bag that I never had. Yeah, you probably mad right now. Yeah, I got a two piece now. Shit, I think they call them groupies now.